Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thanks, as always, for stopping by. Let me start with some big picture thoughts. I don't know if you've ever watched Doctor Strange Love, and uh, I think you should, because I think we're in a kind of Doctor Strange Love territory. Um, I've put up two links on rich wrap ups if you care to take a look. One is Doctor Strange Love's phone conversation, US President. And the second is the war room scene, and I think they both are incredibly prescient and well worth uh, taking a look at four minute clips. And then uh, this morning I was tweeting, Steve Bannon is no Robert Rubin. And uh, I think this is a key point that we've all got to take on board. And I think the FX markets are signaling real concern with Trump. And uh, the dollar, I think, is going to come under a great deal more pressure. Um, so my view is markets are beginning to bail out and uh, things could get very messy. Euro dollar trades above 108, uh, moves closer towards a 2017 high, we're at 108.12 um, right now. I think it's a buy, um, I think it's going up to 109.90 for now. Um, dollar bulls are throwing in the towel as Trump wages evaporate, I think, hit the exit button. Home thoughts again from this morning. I sometimes wonder if the us think that but for an accident of birth, they could have been the them. Um, and uh, I often tell this to people who are extremely religious, I say, yeah, but for an accident of birth, would you be advocating another religion? I strongly, they don't like that. Nassim Taleb, if you do not take risks for your ideas, you are nothing, nothing, he says. Have you met Faith Kanja? Put up her Twitter link. She has been virtually seducing me with her wonderful and delightful photography from the Kenyan coast, from which area I come from. And recently, of course, she has been around Wasini Island. And she tweeted last night, the very best of Wasini's sunsets to calm your day's chaos. And it was well received, Faith, thank you. Wasini Island is just over uh, um, from the harbour of Shimoni, three kilometres diagonal across the channel between the island and the mainland, contains the northward bound East African current of the Indian Ocean coming from Cape Delgado in the north of Mozambique near the border with Tanzania. is deep enough for a natural port and the only one in this area for ocean-going trading dhows and fishing vessels. It is the stopping off point to reach Wasini Island and is some 75 kilometers south of Mombasa. Port immigration and customs facilities are present and provide services for those trade dows and people arriving from Tanzania, especially the island Pemba or further afield. Twice a week there is a passenger transport service by boat to Waiter Pemba. Also, it is possible to board a cargo dhow for payment to that harbour. A um, couple of points. Uh, uh, this is a photograph. This, this photograph by Faith is uh, a Good Morning from the Wasini Shimoni Channel. Um, and uh, on the right of this photograph is Shimoni, on the left is Wasini. I love this photograph a coastal evening by the beach. And uh, it reminds me of many beach evenings. Um, and the colours, she has a fantastic, I don't know how she's doing it, but the brilliant colours. Of course, Ali the Navigator took us to Wasini Island, and uh, I've been recycling him for years. And we met dolphins on the way to Wasini Island, and have a look at some grainy footage I took with my mobile phone about four or five years ago now. Political reflections, U.S. Army M109A6 Paladin fires during a training operation at Camp Mannion, Iraq, in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. The Syrian UN envoy Putin sent a message to Israel that its freedom to act in Syria is over. 
He's a rather fruity fellow, this uh, U uh, Syrian ambassador to the UN. Russia sent a clear message to Israel that the rules of the game have changed in Syria and its freedom to act in Syrian skies is over, Syria's ambassador to the United Nations said on Sunday night. Putin sent a clear message, said Bashar Jafari, speaking on Syrian television. The fact is that the Israeli ambassador to Russia was summoned for a conversation only a day after he submitted his credentials to the Russian Foreign Ministry last Thursday and was told categorically that this game is over. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding. Bibi, however, needs to be careful that Vladimir does not decide to showboat his S-400s, which are currently in Syria. Have a look at this from Russia Politics, S-400 Triumph Mobile Multiple Anti-Aircraft Missile System. I'll also put up a photograph I found of Putin and Bibi. Syrian rebels are carrying out their most ambitious offensive in years in the capital, says the New York Times, and I concluded by saying the rebels are trying to secure a golden parachute from their financiers, who always look at the return on their investment. This must be very visible to the financiers. But the gig, in my view, is up. Bill Clinton's presidency got off to a rough start, I remember it did. How did he fix it? asked Graham David on 42's Lessons for 45. I think it's going to take a lot to fix if it can be fixed. The Wall Street Journal editorial board has, had, has absolutely had it. Look at this. Read this. This is incredible. You know, that your, your newspaper of record should be saying this about you, about its own president. James Comey's remarkable five hours on Capitol Hill. Um, and I think what, what it tells us is the noose is tightening, and it's tightening could tighten at any moment and yank. Marcus Aurelius had a servant follow him around, and every time Aurelius received a compliment, the servant had to whisper in his ear, you're just a man, just a man, to keep him humble. Go back to the piece I wrote on the 5th of December 2016, we have a DBA to Tomahawk. I said then my starting point is the election of President Trump because hindsight will surely show that Russia ran a seriously sophisticated program of interference, mostly digital. I quoted Don DeLillo, the specialist is monitoring data on his mission console when a voice breaks in. Vice President uh, uh, tweeted, POTUS has signed the first NASA Authorization Act in seven years. So, as I said previously, I have no doubt that Putin ran a seriously 21st century, predominantly digital program of interference, and that he has proven himself an information master, and his adversaries are his information victims. Ivanka Trump's role heading into unprecedented territory after it's announced she'll have a West Wing office and security clearance. And I just observe that when Ivanka is off the grid, her dad's tweets tend to go parabolic. The UK has joined the US ban on laptops and cabins on some Mideast flights. It makes no sense, and when things don't make sense, they tend to be nonsense. Bank stocks sink the most since June, seeing the market turn right in front of our eyes. That's a clear signal. That was one of the leading uh, components uh, of the rally. S&P 500 first one percent drop since October. I'm bearish. Euro dollar 108.12. Dollar index below a hundred sell. Japanese yen 111.46 by the yen. Swiss franc 0.9938 by the Swissy. The pound, 124.89. I like the pound. I think it's going higher. Wait till it breaks through 125. Aussie dollar has been on a, on a yes, 0.7670, right? Last in Europe, very firm, 65.495. Modi's dividend. South Korean won, 11.22.09. Brazilian real, 3.0882. Egyptian pound, 18.1707. And the uh, Rand 1269.77, I think it's a trading sell.
UK inflation is over 2%, sending the pound rallying higher. I think that rally's got further to run. Dollar yen uh, right now at 111.44 um, by the yen. Japanese exports jump most in two years, led by sales to China. Interesting development because the Chinese have been using the trade tool as, as leverage over Japan. Dollar index uh, put up a three month chart, sell it. It looks like it's going to break through 99.50. Euro dollar buy the euro on dips for a move back up to 109.90. Apple's share hit a fresh all time high as company introduces cheapest iPad yet, special edition red iPhone. And that took me back to one of my favorite quotations of all time from 1997. Apple's think different. Here's to the crazy ones, the rebels, the troublemakers, the ones who see things differently. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Keep using that presentation, any excuse. And I'll put up a photograph of some Maasai and Savo discovering Aisha and Leila's iPad. Commodity markets, gold, well, that's had a very strong bounce, 1248 last and probably going higher at the moment. Um, on the 28th of November, I wrote, I do not see WTI trading above $60 in any circumstances through 2017. WTI closed at its lowest in three and a half months of $47.34. CNBC is saying that OPEC is now an inventory manager rather than a price setter. And on the 1st of December 2014, I said U.S. has emerged as the new price setter for the oil market, and uh, I think that remains the case. Brazilian President Michel Temer and Angola's Ambassador Nelson Manuel Cosme eat barbecue in a steakhouse in Brasilia in this photograph, and I thought that was very funny. I remember when in the U.K. Um, there was that mad cow's disease and everyone was panicking and all these politicians stuffing steaks down their mouths and you were thinking, good grief, but risky behavior. Nicolas Maduro orders the largest banknote in Venezuela, a 100-unit banknote out of circulation. It's worth fewer than three U.S. cents. Sub-Saharan Africa, Somalia's new president names a 26-minister cabinet. Thank God he didn't name a 110-minister cabinet as we as we know somebody has done over there in Accra. Uh, President uh, Abdullahi Mohammed, better known by his nickname Formaggio, Big Cheese, was sworn in last month after unseating Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, whose administration faced public and Western criticism for corruption scandals. A lot of goodwill uh, in the game here. And it, it would be interesting to see if they can leverage it. I read that piece about Trump and his impact in Africa, and I, as I was writing it, I was wondering to myself, I wonder if Africa is war-gaming the effect of a Trump administration on the continent and modeling where the cliff edge effects are. ISS Africa, Africa must resist hawks and securocrats who urge brutal military-led counter-terrorism policies. I couldn't agree more. But I think, unfortunately, early signals, in particular in Yemen, are indicating that the Trump administration is looking at Africa through a security-focused lens. I'll put up a photograph of a Ugandan soldier, part of Amazon, guarding a football stadium in Mogadishu, Somalia. Odebrecht, Brazilian company, admits to paying $50 million of bribes to win contracts in Angola, 900,000 in Mozambique. But in Angola, which along with Mozambique is the only country outside of Latin America on the list of places where it has admitted paying bribes, there has been absolute silence. This is the other problem, isn't it? You can have a coercive international system, but then the domestic system might just entirely refuse to collaborate and cooperate, which is what's happening here. How to repeat the Mugabe mantra, Africa Confidential, by calling for land distribution without compensation, redistribution without compensation. Zuma's following his Zimbabwean counterpart and throwing his foes into confusion. 
think uh, it's an interesting development as he tacks to the populist side in order to shore up his popularity. South African all shares up 4.15% this year. Dollar versus Rand. I think the Rand is a trading sell. Egyptian pound, the IMF just slotted them another billion dollars. Nigeria has floated its Naira within a range, says the central bank governor, against the dollar and the file. He's got his finger in the dike. He's had it there for a heck of a long time, I must admit. The Naira held around 305 per dollar for almost a year, was recently effectively devalued for certain categories of the population, though the central bank continues to tightly manage the rate. He didn't say what the range was, but said the exchange rate was looking better than expected. We have seen the rates converging, and we are strong, we're strongly very optimistic that rate will converge further, he said. What he's talking about. Um, I think you know they would do well to think that policy making agility is key for a thriving economy, which was my piece over the weekend. As Lao Tzu has said, men are born soft and supple. Dead, they are stiff and hard. Plants are born tender and pliant. Dead, they are brittle and dry. Thus, whoever is stiff and inflexible is a disciple of death. Whoever is soft and yielding is a disciple of life. The hard and the stiff will be broken. The soft and the supple will prevail. They are extremely stiff. And this is not the time to be stiff and inflexible. This is the time to be soft and supple. Nigerian all shares down 4.96% this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange is up 11.84% this year. Kenya has borrowed a total of $1.55 billion in three syndicated loans. Borrowed $800 million in a syndicated loan from four international commercial lenders. Also getting $500 million syndicated loan from Afrexim Bank and Trade Development Bank. Another $250 million syndicated loan was agreed earlier with TDP. The facility for which Afrex Bank and TDP acted, TDB acted as joint mandated lead arrangers, is part of a $1.55 billion debt package of three facilities being arranged and raised in parallel, Afrex Bank said in a statement issued on Monday. President Kenyatta, who faces re-election in August, dismissed criticism last week of his accelerated borrowing, saying the money was funding development. Um, uh, we signed and have already drawn down the money, said Kamau Fuge, Principal Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, told Reuters. But at least they're getting ahead of the curve in the election. Uh, Diamond Trust has announced that it has entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Habib Bank Kenya Limited. Um, completion of the transaction subject to closing conditions include procurement of shareholders' approvals as well as regulatory approvals from various regulators including the State Bank of Pakistan, Central Bank of Kenya, Competition Authority of Kenya and the Capital Markets Authority. Under the transaction, the entire consideration is intended subject to all requisite uh, regulatory approvals to be satisfied by the issuance of 13,281,105 ordinary new shares in DTB at a price of shillings 137.39 per share to HBL, who is already a shareholder in DTB. Shareholders are going to be diluted by 4.7%. DTB also reported stunningly good numbers. Full year profit after tax up 17.096%. Government securities more than doubled, up 116%. Loans and advances uh, rose 4.933%. Interesting total assets up big time, 20.778%. Total operating income up 22.786%. Loan provision hiked 96%. Staff costs held at 2.929% only. Up. Um, uh, profit after tax up 17.096%, EPS up 21.351%, dividend share up 4%, very low dividend payout ratio, and the seam conserves cash. Um, uh, they spoke about loan book growth 9%, customer deposits up 34%, total assets up 28%, pre tax up 26%. Um, so my conclusion, strong results, and at, at, on a P of less than four, this is a screaming buy. 
Nassim, who was an old friend and dear friend of my mother's, conserves cash, look at the dividend payout ratio, and compounds the cash return as equity. Well organized, well run, ambitious regionally as well. I put up a photograph of the view from Nassim's office. She's down near the National Park. Kenya's central bank expects to lift Chase Bank out of receivership soon, the governor of the central bank said. Kenya shilling 103.10. Nairobi all share rallied 0.46%. It's narrowed its year to date loss to just minus 4.17%. NAC 20 crossed the important 3,000 mark and it's down 5.6% year to date. Once again, I'm deeply grateful that you stopped by.